The first time I saw the word fungi on the menu at an Italian restaurant, I nearly lost my appetite until I discovered that it referred to a dish prepared with mushrooms. From the humble porcini to the sought after Japanese masutake, mushrooms are part of world cuisine and they hold a special fascination for our guest chef, Sheldon Raju. The slopes above the Cape Peninsula seaboard are a great place to forage for mushrooms. But one must be able to identify specimens that are safe to eat. Sheldon had arranged to meet local expert Justin Williams. Hey Justin. How's it going? Very good, thank you. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to be out on this beautiful day. Fantastic morning and I'm really hoping we can find some mushrooms today. Great, I can't wait. Let's go mushroom foraging. That's it. What we're looking for are shapes and splashes of colour that just kind of pop out through the forest floor. There's some good kind of varieties which you can find, such as the porcini mushroom, there is the pine ring mushroom, the babelitas, which are all fantastic to eat. Hey, what's this? What we have here is a pine ring. It gets its name pine ring from the rings that you can notice on top of the cap and it grows under pine trees. Big question, is this one edible? Absolutely, very tasty too. How do I know if this is a pine ring? The biggest giveaway is that it's got orange gills and another giveaway is that if I just had to cut it, it exudes this orange kind of latex milk. That's a good characteristic of it. Let's get some more. Let's go. There looks like a little something. Okay, what we have here is called a slippery jack. Edible, it's got sponge, under the cap, which is always a good sign here in the Western Cape. So we're gonna pop it into the basket. Nice. Let's keep on going. Okay, Josh, we, we got enough in here. My stomach's rumbling. Uh, I got a bit of a brunch set for King. Thank you again for your time. Thank you so much for having me, Sheldon. Keep Cheers. Well. <laughs> so that was a fantastic morning. Spending the time with Justin out in the forest felt like a little boy digging around, searching for these little gems. Now we're going to prepare them in a, a very special way. What I'm going to get ready for you is a little saffron batter. All I have is about 100 grams of uh, flour. To that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of yogurt, seven grams of yeast, and about a tablespoon of sugar. Now this is just going to act like food for the yeast. It's just going to slowly be mm, yummy, start to wake up from its sleep and then really start to activate this batter. In my pan, I've just got a bit of water that's just been boiling away and in there I'm just going to chuck in my saffron threads. Just gently working around the pan. We're just going to turn off our heat and let that cool down ever so slightly. You don't want it too warm, otherwise you're going to kill your yeast. We're just going to let that sit. So. While we're waiting for our saffron water just to cool down slightly, I just want to get ready on our desserts. What I have for you today is called an orange fool. All it involves is just some fresh pouring cream, a little bit of sugar, some oranges, and then some brandy, which is optional. If you want to leave it out or if you don't want to use it, that's up to you really. And obviously some beautiful spices. In my cream, I'm just going to add about 100 grams of sugar. This is just going to help uh, with the whisking process to make it nice and thick. And you almost want a soft peak on this. Great, that's done. I'm just going to put it aside to cool down and that looks like my saffron is ready for me. And this is going to go into my mixture. One of my favorite ingredients to use in the kitchen is saffron. This is almost done, I'm going to leave this aside. And once it's doubled, I'm just going to knock it back slightly with my spoon and it's ready for our mushrooms. While this is heating up, I quickly segmented some oranges earlier part, a little bit of oil. I just want to wait for our pan to get nice and warm. In going to go my oranges so I can get them nicely caramelized. In for my hard spices, I'm going to get my cardamom, some star anise, which works great with oranges, and a little bit of cinnamon in there. Just a little bit of sugar, just to bring out that nice tanginess of the orange. We're ready for our brandy next. You just want to cook the alcohol out, the gentle spices lifting the ingredients, and the warmness of the brandy mingling well with each other. These are done. I'm just going to move my hard spices to the side and then just spoon a bit into my serving dish. Top it off with a bit of my cream 
and then a little bit of garnish with some fresh mint and we're ready to serve. I'm just gonna get onto our mushrooms now and start by heating up my oil. I'm just gonna cut them into almost bite-sized portions here. Keeping it rustic and unnatural, different shapes and sizes, just makes it more interesting. So you don't want them too big because you want them to cook in that batter nice and evenly. I'm just gonna test my oil for a bit, make sure it's nice and warm. Great stuff, I think we're ready now. I'm gonna pop my mushrooms into the batter and get them coating. Wonderful, our mushrooms are almost done in this pot. I'm just gonna pick them out gently and drain it on some paper towel. Next step, my pan's gonna go on for my potato rosti. In there goes a little bit of butter, some thyme, garlic. Oh, fantastic. Slowly soften those spring onions out. So I'm just gonna pick out the thyme that's infused in here now. And all I'm gonna do is now pop these onto my potatoes that I've pre-boiled and grated. We're gonna gently fold in the spring onions into our potato mixture. And then let's get it back into our pan. Just squish it down. We're gonna slowly cook this gently till it's nice and golden brown on the one side. Flip him and then get him ready for our plate. Let's get back to our desserts really quickly. We just gently gonna wax our cream on top of over here. Gently smooth him around. I've got these great little orange crisp as a garnish. And this is simple and so easy, perfect for outdoors. Oh, looks like my potatoes are almost done. So, using a plate, give it a little flip, and then slide him back into the pan so we can get the other side nicely caramelized. That is gonna be delicious. Earthy, full of flavor from the spring onions. Mm, I can't wait for our mushrooms to join this feast. I'm gonna finish this into my plate. In the same pan, I'm just gonna crack two eggs, because nothing's better than eggs. And some mushrooms. A little seasoning. And while I'm waiting for my eggs to slowly cook through, I'm just gonna gently garnish with my mushrooms. Last mushroom goes on there. Nice little protein, good little starch with some potatoes. A Little bit of saffron coming through. A brunch fit for king. I'm gonna to top this off with some homemade curry aioli. I'm gonna grate some parmesan and then just finish off with some beautiful fresh herbs from the forest. That looks absolutely scrumptious. Rusty in the forest, free range egg, some mushrooms that we went out hunting for ourselves. It's been such an epic adventure. Thank you for sharing it with me. I'm gonna tuck in though. Oh into our beautiful rosti. Mmm, delicious. Mm. 